In this video, we're going to look at how to patch the top skin of the parachute next to the tail. And in this case, we're going to have to detach the non-loaded rib and then reattach it after we've put the patch on. I've also deliberately picked a location where we have to remove and reattach one of the control lines. Now, one thing in this video that is a little controversial is I'm going to tell you that it's okay to not worry about the orientation of the warp or fill threads. I don't want to get into some long internet fight over this. The answer for your oral and practical test is still that you align the warp threads same as original manufacture. I'm not even saying that's a bad idea, but I am saying on a small patch like this, don't worry about it. I could go into more detail about what specs the fabric is when we get it from the manufacturers and what the mill spec is. But at that point, I'm falling into the trap of arguing with you, and I don't want to do that. You don't have to use my method. Good luck. So here's what we're going to be working on. You can see where the line attachment point is, and I need to start removing that bar tack right off the bat. Go easy, you don't want to damage it. Clean out all the old thread, and then move the uh, line attachment point down the canopy and put a safety pin in it. Move it in a manner that you're not going to get it twisted or tangled around anything else. That'll save you a lot of time later on. Now start on picking the tail seam about 12 inches either side of the rib seam. Here I'm using a technique of breaking about every fifth stitch. Once I've got them all broken, I'll go to the other side and I'll make sure I break just the stitch at either end and then pull the thread. That should break the whole seam open. Now do the same thing on the rib by uh, unpicking about 12 inches of the rib and then cleaning everything out so you're ready to get started with your patch. Slide the parachute onto a sheet of masonite that you have clamped to the table so that you can expose the damaged area and then take an iron that you've got set on the nylon setting and iron the wrinkles and folds out of the tail just to make it easier to get a good level mark. After that clamp the parachute to your working area and keep it flat and stable. Take your six inch patching square now and align it with the weave of the fabric, not necessarily the edge of the tail. You'll notice I've centered it on the rib at the three inch mark and then on its longest side dimension it's about five inches and about four and a half inches on the other one so it's not going to be a square this time. I then mark around it, in my case in Sharpie. You guys will use a Dixon marking pencil, but I want you to be able to see it in the video. So here's the controversial bit. The material I'm going to use for my patch, obviously, is uh, ZP, same as original. I'm using a different color this time so you guys can see it. But on this scrap, there's no way I can identify where the warp threads are. And I get this question a lot from people in DZ land who buy a bag of scrap from PD and then kind of worry about whether or not they can align it correctly. Well, I always waffle when I answer them, but I've decided not to. Don't worry about it. For the test, worry about it. For back home, don't worry about it. So I'll iron that out nice and flat, making it easier for me to work with. Now take your six and a half inch packing patch in square, place it on the material, matching it with the weave of the fabric so it's not off at a funny angle, and then draw a box all the way around it in Sharpie. Once you've drawn all the way around it, same technique as before, slide the uh, patch in square over a half inch on both dimensions, and draw another square all the way around it then fill in the corners. This will leave you with a 6 inch square sat in the middle of a 7 inch square or if you want to think of it another way, a 6 inch square with a half inch seam allowance all the way around it. We'll cut that out now and then using an iron on the nylon setting I'm going to pre-fold three sides. Now you might ask yourself why have we bothered marking it the same as we do for a basic patch when we're not going to put this onto a four-sided piece of damage? Well, the answer is by making it a standard procedure, you don't kind of overtax yourself trying to think through the minutiae of the patch. Just keep it simple. 
Now check your patch against your uh, damage to make sure you've got something that'll cover it. And then on what will be the top left, when I'm sewing this on, on the top left side, find where the patch ends on the parachute and put a lineup mark there so we know where to introduce canopy fabric when we're patching. At the machine, you're going to start by sewing on the patch for that approximately an inch in this case before we introduce canopy fabric. This is very important that we start that sewing before we add canopy material because later on when we're handling this we don't want stitches to fray out into our patch. We'll now sew around it on three sides in the normal manner. So we'll just use our lineup marks or guidelines and sew the patch to the canopy. You'll notice in this case I'm sewing it to the outside. Uh, as I've said in previous videos on your test, please put the patch on the inside of the parachute, but in real life it honestly doesn't matter. When you get to the third side, the last side, remember to sew all the way off the canopy and keep going all the way to the end of the patch. This again is important to avoid that problem with stitches fraying out onto your patch. Slide your work back onto the board you've been using and clamp the work to the board so that the tail seam is under a little bit of tension. You're now going to transfer a mark from the center of the seam where the rib was sewn in to the patch. You're going to need this mark later on to figure out where to put the rib. Using the technique you learned in the basic patching video, mark all the way around the inside of the damaged area now using your 5 8 of an inch wide ruler and then mark your easements for the corners and cut out the damage. Back to the sewing machine now to sew the inside row on your patch. Only difference to what you've done before is you actually start the sewing on the patch. That's the yellow piece in this uh, example. It's important that you sew on the patch before you get to the canopy and then at the other side sew all the way off the end again. You'll see why soon. Clamp your tail seam back to the board and take a metal ruler that's a little bigger than six inches and lay it up against that tail seam. Take a hot knife now and run it down the outside of the metal ruler and what you're actually trying to do is weld the patch, the canopy and the nylon thread together. Remember they're all plastic and in doing that it will stop the thread from fraying out. That's why it was important that you sewed onto the patch in the last section. You can now pull the unused portion of the patch, the waste, away, leaving the metal ruler in place so that it doesn't pull any other strands of thread. Mark the center of the rib to the little lineup mark you put on the end of your patch now so that you can put the rib back in in a moment. Now when your parachute was built originally, the factory used a fancy dancy twin needle machine with a puller on it like this one to put the rib in, but it's not necessary. You can do just as good of a job on your single needle machine. Start out at the end where the rib is still attached to the parachute. Don't start at the open tail seam. Typically I like to start on the outboard row and you want to have a four inch over sew on the existing seam. When you get to the end, pull the parachute out from under the sewing machine foot and then inspect it and see if you've sewn any of the parachute to itself that you shouldn't have. In this example you can clearly see I made a mistake here. I'd love to see that was just for the video but nope that's a mistake. And you can see there's three or four offending stitches that I need to remove and I'm lucky that it's actually at the beginning so I can just not do anything about this. I don't have to do any over -sews. I can just lose those stitches. Then inspect the rest of the work as long as the rest of it's good. I can put the parachute back under the sewing machine needle and sew the inboard row again with about a four inch over sew on the existing seam working to keep the parachute canopy flat and the rib flat against each other and hopefully this time not sewing any other wrong stuff to itself. You'll notice on both of those seams at the tail, 
I left the thread about four or five inches long. Now put the whole of the tail seam between the unpicks onto your board and clamp it at each edge where the, sto the sewing is still intact. This is one of the few tricks I know but it's very helpful. You want to lightly tension that seam. You'll find that the tape is under more uh, is, is shorter than the canopy itself so it's under tension it takes the load so that the canopy fabric doesn't have to so to get rid of that kink pull it under tension now you can trim off those uh, threads at about a three quarter inch left if you trim them off in advance of this step when you're manipulating it it will unravel and you'll start to unravel the rib you can now remake the fold of the tail seam, being careful to not twist the tape. It's pretty straightforward when you look at it. It'll only take you one or two goes to get this. You can't fold the whole tail in one go. So typically I like to start in the middle, that is to say the middle between the two unpicked areas. And this is one of the few times where I actually use pins. And the reason I'm doing it is I'm trying to distribute that slack evenly throughout this tape and this seam. So I'll put a pin in it and frankly the orientation of this pin does matter so have a look at that. I'll then go to the middle of the middle. So between the pin and one of the sewn edges I'll make the fold there and I'll put a pin in at that point. Again this just allows us to capture the shrinkage at the appropriate point so we can put it back into this seam when we re-sew it. We now keep repeating this step for the remainder of it, so we keep subdividing each middle with a new middle. I hope that makes some kind of sense. Now this time I am going to show off. I'm going to use a twin needle machine with a puller to put this seam back together. Uh, and I just start again about four inches before the end of the old sewing to put a good over sew in there. And then I carefully, as I sew this seam, make sure that I'm keeping the bottom flat with no extra material under there that I don't want in the seam. And I also remove the pin just before the needles enter at that point so that I can keep that distributing the slack or the tension correctly throughout this work. At the end of it, I sew off four inches as you'd expect. If, however, it's not possible, because let's say you're at the edge of the parachute and you couldn't do a four inch over so, you would back up and I would recommend you back up one inch. We'll see that in later videos. So that's the patch portion of the video finished. All you gotta do now is inspect it, make sure the patch is where it's supposed to be, all the thread is where it's supposed to be and you haven't sewn anything incorrectly to itself. Now we've got to get this line attachment point back into its location. Because you were so diligent about the way you removed it and moved it down the seam earlier, we don't have to worry about unentangling it. We can just move it back to its correct position and then start to get it located ready for bar tacking. I recommend that once you've got it rough located, you pin it back in place and then go to a single needle machine and just tack stitch it. So these aren't to hold it um, for use, they're just to make sure you've got it centered well before you try and bar tack it. So make sure that the tape is directly on top of itself above and below the seam and you can see where the old bar tack was placed by the white spot on the tape. Make sure that's between the two rows of the tail seam. Now place your bar tack so that it's between the tail seam rows of stitching, right in the middle of them. If you don't have access to a bar tacker, you can use a single or double throw zigzag to do this. Do two rows at, either seven, at about seven to 11 stitches per inch. Don't go quite off the edge of the line attachment tape. And then just check that you've got it in the right location We'll take a little look at that here. So between these two rows of stitching and in the center of the tape, beautiful, top and bottom. The only thing you gotta do now is check that the line is in fact in the right place without being twisted or tangled around anything else. 
So the best way to do that, obviously, is hang it up and do a full continuity check. At this point, clean up, put your tools away, double check uh, the work, and then you can get it out of there and back to the customer. If you've seen any of my videos, you've probably noticed that sometimes I like to do a little spiel at the end of it, so you can turn off now if you've learned what you need to. At this point, I just wanted to say thank you to TK Donnelly. He's one of those people who in my skydiving career I've only met and interacted with on a few occasions, but I was really impressed with him. I think most notably, he didn't really care about what anybody else thought, and he didn't do things for the, for the sake of being seen to do the right thing. He just did the right thing. Probably not the easiest guy to get along with, but uh, an absolute legend within our industry. A uh, huge contributor to both the Tandem and AFF programs, uh, and just all around very knowledgeable human being. At this point, I think he is still with uh, CPS, although it's about time you retired, you old go. So thanks very much, TK, for uh, the influence you've been on me. See you.